Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create custom fonts for the UADG2 library, as you can see using the Arduino Uno and the OLED display. This is the SSD 1306 128x64 pixel I2C version of the OLED display, but you can use this technique for any display that the UADG2 library supports, so let's get started. And let me start by saying that the UADG2 library includes a lot of different fonts to choose from. Actually, so many fonts that sometimes choosing the right one might take a lot of time. But let's say that I like for example this font T022B and I would like to use it in my sketch. I will open my older project on Wokwe which is called image to OLED in 60 seconds and just get rid of this image because I will not be drawing image this time and then also delete the draw XBMP function which will leave me with a very simple sketch using the Arduino Uno and the OLED display and the UHG2 library. I just call the UHG2 begin then clear the buffer then I want to draw something and send the buffer to the display and the drawing section should draw the label in this font. If I open the UHG2 documentation I'm looking for the draw string function and there is actually an example of both drawing the string and setting the font, so I'll copy both of the lines into our sketch. And for the used font, I want to use this T022B, but the name is actually UHG2 font T022B, TF, TR or TN. And the difference is how many characters are included in the font. I will go with TR, which stands for reduced. So just remember the name and type it in the sketch. So it's UHG2 font T022B, TR. And let's restart the simulation and we indeed see a message hello world. So using a predefined fonts is quite simple, let's try to create a custom one. Now one thing that I like about the UHG2 library is the documentation because it already inserts the question how to generate your own font. You have to have this in the BDF file format, then you use some utility to generate the data and then you copy the data into sketch. But let's start in the beginning, it's saying that there is also a nice Windows bitmap application called Phony and that's the one that we will be using today. And that's mainly because this application is free and you can use it to export the BDF file format, but first we need to have some font. And you can use a pencil or the line tool to draw the character, like so, and then you can see the preview on the left side. But in order to speed things up, we will be using the existing font, and you can import the true type font by going to File, Import, True Type Font. I don't want to save my creation, and let's use some font that I will be using, actually the same font that I was using in my previous video, creating custom clocks for smartwatches. If you haven't seen the video, the link is in the description. So the font is called Aldo the Epic. I will select the regular size, and for the size, I'll probably go with something smaller, like 12 or 13 pixels. Then click the OK button, and it will prefill all the necessary details, like the height or the ascent. So I don't think that we have to do anything in here, except for clicking the OK button one more time. And now you can see the preview of the font on the right side as well as on the left side and you can see the individual digits in the middle of the window. And you can still use the pen tool or the line tool to make changes to the individual glyphs if you don't like how they look like. But today I will just keep moving on and create a BDF file by going to File, Export as the BDF font. I can keep the default setting and click the OK button and save it somewhere on my disk. And then I can continue to the next step which is using the BDF conf utility to generate the font data from this BDF file. I need to first download this BDF conf utility from the GitHub. And I was using this BDF conf.dxc, so I'll just click it and download it and put it in the same folder as our BDF file. Now, if I double click this application, you will see a command line for a fraction of the second. And that's because we need to run it from the command line. So I will select Windows Run and type in CMD for command line. And I want to run this utility from here. So bfdconf.exe. And it will show us all the different options that we have. Actually, there are so many options that I will probably go back to documentation because there is just a subset of those being listed in here and those are the ones that we will be using. So in the command line, let's again type in BFD conversion. First, we need to type in dash F1 for UHG2 font, dash M for the range of those characters. And if I go back to Phony, the first character that we probably want to use is the character number 32. It's a space character. And the last character is Z character, which is number 122. So back in the command line, we want to use characters from 32 to 122. The next is a font name. Let's call this Aldo the Apache. Then the output file, again, Aldo the Apache.c. And the input file, which will be the Aldo the Apache.bdf. And I think that this is all that's required. So I'll press the enter key and it will create us the C file. And it includes some font data. And if I open the documentation, it just says that once this is being created, we want to paste it into our existing file or our existing project. So inside the Wokwe emulator, I will paste this C file up here. And we should have a new font called Aldo the Apache. So I'll copy the name and use it in our set font function and restart the simulation. And in a few seconds, we should see the message hello world being written in a different font. 
And while it looks okay, it's definitely far from being perfect, and that's because designing a pixel font takes a lot of time and a lot of tweaking. You can see the spacing is wrong and some of those characters look strange. Now you can get better results if you use a bigger font and let me actually show you that. Let's go back to Fony and import the same font again, but this time we will use much bigger size, for example 26 pixels, and immediately you can see that those characters look much better, so again I will export it as a PDF file format, and generate the C file, and copy the content into our sketch. And if I use this new font that's called Aldo the FH26 points, and maybe set the Y position to be a little bit lower, and restart the simulation, now I see much bigger message, and those characters look a little bit better. But obviously I can fit less characters on the screen, and the memory consumption of this font will be a little bit bigger. Let me show you one more thing, and that's actually related to this video for custom clocks for smartwatches, because I've created those pixel perfect digits based on the Aldo the Epic font, but those are too big for our use case because the height is 100 pixels, while our display only has 64 pixels, so what I will do is I will make those half the size by going to image, image size, and set the size to 50%, and set the resampling to the nearest neighbor to keep the hard edges, and we should have a new font which still looks very nice, so I will save it as a PNG by going into file, export as PNG image, give it some meaningful name and save it. Back in Phony, I want to turn this image into a new font, so I will create a new font by going to File, New, and set the height to be 50 pixels as well as the Ascent, and click the OK button. Now you will see that the width of the font is only 9 pixels, but each digit in our font is 20 pixels wide, so we have to resize it by going to View, Resize, and add 11 pixels horizontally, so now the width is 20 pixels, and then import the image by going to File, Import from Bitmap, select the image, and in this dialog we want to type in the string, which will be from 0 to 9, and select the color, which will be the white color, click the Grab Glyphs button and the Done button, and you should see those individual digits being placed in our font. You should already know the next steps, and that's of course exporting this in the PDF file format, and then converting it into a C file, but this time it's a little bit different, because we are only using digits, so the digit number 0 is value 38, and the digit number 9 is value 57, so I'll adjust the range accordingly, and create a C file. And then of course paste the content in our sketch, and instead of printing hello world, we want to print the digits, so for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, change the font to all the digits 50 pixels, and move it down even more. Let's restart the simulation one last time, and we should see those big pixel perfect digits. Now if you want to run this on the real Arduino, you need to copy the code into the Arduino IDE. If you've never used the U8G2 library before, you have to go to Libraries, type in U8G2 and install the library, then select the correct board, in my case it's Arduino Uno, and click the Upload button. Now as for the connection between the display and the Arduino, it's the same as on the walkway sketch, which means that the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, the SDA, the serial data, either goes to pin SDA or pin A4, and the SCL, the serial clock, either goes to pin SCL or pin A5. And so once you connect everything and reset the Arduino board, you should see those big digits being displayed on the OLED display. And I actually have a few different displays that I usually use, starting from this small one, which is about 0.9 inch. I have also the bigger one, this one is 1.5 inch. And finally the biggest one, this one is I believe about 2.4 inches. I've also created this simple shield, which shows four different OLED displays having different colors. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create custom font, or at least custom digits, with the U8G2 library. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.